Well, global warming is believed to be having a significant effect on puffin populations. Extreme weather and temperature rises have led to disruptions to their food chain and damage to their habitats. A few miles off England's sandy northeastern coastline, there's a rocky archipelago. Isolated, barren and nearly unscarred by humans, save for a few lighthouses and a 650-year-old former monastery. For centuries, the foreign islands have been left almost unchanged, attracting only a few solitary hermits, sunbathing seals and hundreds of thousands of breeding birds, like the Atlantic puffins. But even on this remote outcrop, where only nature appears to govern who survives and who doesn't, there's now another force to contend with, climate change. Every morning, Gwen Potter and her team of park rangers arrive before the crush of tourists. They are very delicate. They can sometimes collapse, so we've got to be very careful. They go burrow to burrow, shoulder deep, to count how many puffins are underground with their eggs. Ah, oh, unoccupied. No one home. I really want a nibble. The global population of Atlantic puffins is in steep decline, so the count is done every summer. The growing frequency of extreme weather threatens to flood their burrows and the eggs inside them. Rising temperatures are disrupting their food chain. But on this sunny day, it's hard to imagine the Foreign Islands puffin has anything to worry about. I'm just looking out at all the birds behind you. It's difficult to envision that these birds could in any way be threatened. What we're seeing here is a snapshot in time, but over the long term, um, all of these birds are declining. You'll often see puffins holding fish in their mouths. That's their primary food source called sand eels. When eel eggs hatch, they're supposed to feed on plankton, which blooms at around the same time of year. But with rising sea temperatures, those two events are now out of sync by almost three weeks. Less food for sand eels ultimately means fewer sand eels for puffins. And these puffins also, they, they pair for life. Puffin divorce rate, we believe, is quite low. They're better at commitment in relationships than we are. They're much better at bird marriage than human marriage, yeah. A human commitment is exactly what these birds need. The 2015 Paris Climate Accord committed world leaders to keep global temperatures from rising more than two degrees Celsius. But a newly published report from the WWF warns of an uncertain future for the Atlantic puffin if temperatures rise more than 1.5 degrees. Leaders will have another kick at the climate crisis can at the COP26 summit this fall in Scotland. If we do not step up at the end of this year at the, at the, the climate meeting, it will have been a complete abdication of responsibility, a real missed opportunity, and we'll be letting down future generations if we don't act now. Puffin populations in Norway have dropped sharply, and in Iceland, colonies are at risk of dying out completely, according to the WWF. But on the farms, the puffin population appears stable after declining over the past two decades. What really causes issues is rapid change. And while our lifetime may not feel like a rapid change, that is a rapid change. They can adapt to a slowly changing climate, but not at the rate that we're at right now. That's exactly it, yeah meaning the rest of the world will have to change so these islands don't.